many people ask me that why Quran says that heart thinks. Please answer, sir. It's a difficult question for all Muslims and is asked by atheists. The question posed by Yasir Ali is that many atheists ask him that why does the Quran say that heart thinks and what should we reply? The reply to this question is that every language has its own way of conveying and it has its own inference. Before I reply this question, I'd like to give an example that we normally say that I want to memorize the Quran by heart or I want to memorize this particular speech by heart. We know very well that the memory is in the brain. It's not in the heart. So when the seat of memory is in the brain, we have to memorize by brain. Not by heart, but yet we say, I want to memorize by heart. In Hindi we say, Main dil se yaad karna chata hum. Main, So, same thing. So similarly, every language has its own way of conveying. For example, we tell to our wife that we love you from the bottom of our heart. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Imagine a scientist telling his wife, I love you from the bottom of the brain. Because the love is in the brain, it's not in the heart. But when we say in English, we say, I love you from the bottom of the heart, not bottom of the brain. So this is how language has developed. Though logically, all of us know who are educated, that the seat of memory is in the brain. The seat of love is in the brain. It is by the brain you love, not by the heart. But this is how language has developed. I'll give you umpteen number of such examples. We say that the sun rises. We know scientifically that the sun and the earth, the earth rotates on its axis and revolves around the sun. The sun does not rise. But yet we say sunrise, sunset. We know sun doesn't set. We know very well it is by the rotation and the revolution of the earth that we, the sun seems to rise and the sun seems to set. But yet we say sunrise, sunset. Even the scientist says that. He doesn't say that the sun is not rising. There are various examples we use in language. We use the word disaster. Disaster means something of a calamity, maybe something bad has happened or something uh, not good has happened. But actual literal meaning of disaster is an evil star. But meaning wise, it is something calamity. So this is how language develops. So similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the Quran for the human beings. And even in Arabic language, we know very well it is the brain that thinks but how we say in English, I love you from the bottom of the heart, I want to memorize by heart. Similarly, in Arabic language also, it is used that the heart thinks. It is normal. So person who knows Arabic as a language and a person who knows English well, and if someone says, I want to memorize by heart, he will not say, hey, you are a fool, you should memorize by brain, not by the heart. This is what the language is. So similarly, like English and Hindi and other languages, even in Arabic language, when Allah says, hard things, it is the same way it is used a layman uh, an Arab will not object because that is the language of the human beings but many times you have to understand that one word can have many meanings for example, the first two verses of the Quran revealed was from Surah Iqra or Surah Alaq that's chapter number 96, verse number 1 and 2 where Allah says Iqra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalaq khalaqal insana min alaq Read, recite or proclaim in the name of thy Lord who has created, who has created you from an alaka. And the alaka was translated like congealed clot of blood. All the old tafasids, they translate alaka as congealed clot of blood. And today we do know that the embryo in the initial stages looked like a congealed clot of blood. Though it's not blood, they look, the appearance is there. So the Quran is correct. But now after science is advanced, we have come to know 
that the initial stages of an embryo looks like a leech. And we know the other meaning of alaka is leech. Today science tells us that the embryo clings to the uterine wall. The third meaning of alaka is something which clings. So when Allah says, Ikra bismi rabbikal ladhi khalak, khalakal insana min alak means read, recite and proclaim in the name of the Lord who has created. Who has created man from something which clings, a leech like substance, a congeal clot of blood. All three are correct. But all the classical tafasids, they only translate it as congeal clot of blood. Similarly, as we know in today's Arabic language, heart, when we use the word, it says hard things. Therefore, Quran says in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 2, some, Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 7, Allah says, Khatam Allah Qulubihim. Allah has put a seal on the heart. Seal on the heart, if you put a seal on the brain. So this is how the language is. So no Adam will take objection to it. When the Quran says hard things, Allah has put a seal on the heart. Tomorrow, we don't know. Science may advance. Like how from Alaka one meaning is Kanjilkot Abagi is correct. Today we come to know that it also means a leech like substance and the embryo looks like a leech. It links to the uterine wall. Allah Alam tomorrow maybe we will come to know the hard things on Allah Alam. So, but the, today how the language is used, hard things, how we say in English, I memorize from the heart, I, I memorize by heart, I love you from the bottom of that. Same in Arabic, hard things is a normal Arabic idiom, it's not wrong at all. Tomorrow, later on, Allah Alam, science may advance and science may find out the hard thing, maybe Allah Alam. But today, you cannot say the Quran is wrong. There may be other meanings to it which Allah may make us know later on. But today, as a language, there's no problem at all. And no Arab who knows Arabic language will ever object to this phrase that Allah says in the Quran that hard things. Hope that's the best.